Peter, Zachariah, chapter 3. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have remo removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you walk, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house, and likewise have charge of my course. I will give you places to walk among those who stand here. Hear, O Joshua the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts. And I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Amen. 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 So now we are looking uh, for the vision which God showed to Zachariah. So last few weeks, we are we in the uh, first chapter we read the vision 1. Uh, the last week we saw vision 2 and 3. So this is the third vision, you know, and uh, you know, like this, God showed to Zachariah eight visions. So, so the vision uh, here, the first words uh, says, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. So the angel is showing uh, the uh, the vision. He opened the spiritual eyes of the prophet Zachariah, and he saw. Joshua, the high priest, uh, standing before the angel of the Lord. You know, Joshua, we know, uh, in, uh, in Daniel, we read about, uh, you know, we, we discussed about Joshua. Uh, if you read in uh, Ezra, chapter 3 and 2, so when King Cyrus, when he captured the Babylonian kingdom, the first thing he uh, declared freedom for the Jewish people. So, then... Uh, the, the leader uh, Zerubbabel and the high priest Joshua so under their leadership around 50,000 Jewish people they went to the Babylon uh, sorry uh, Bob, from Babylon to Israel so when the first thing when they went to the Israel they uh, start the they build the uh, the altar of the Lord. You can read in Ezra chapter 2 and 3. So, there, when they started to build the altar and they, they started to do worship in the, in the place which uh, King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the, uh, the temple of the Lord. So, you know, immediately the opposition came. So, they started, uh, they built the altar and they lay in the foundation. So the Samaritans, the Samaritan settlers, if you read in Ezra chapter 1, 4 to 5, the Samaritan settlers, they are forced uh, the Jewish people not to build the temple. So they, uh, they reported to the king, false report about the Jewish people. They want to uh, establish their kingdom. They are declaring a king. Like that all the, uh, you know, false report to the king. So the king, um, the, uh, the uh, Cyrus, under Cyrus, uh, Dore, uh, Doreas, he stopped the work of the Lord. So the work of the Lord was uh, stopped 17 years, you know, long years. So during the 17 years, the people they started the work of the Lord they the opposition came and all the um, the king also he withdraw the support so then 
the people, the 50,000 people, they uh, left the work of Lord and they started to build their life. You know, 17 years, uh, they started to, we can read in uh, uh, Agai, Agai chapter 1 and 2 also. So then, 17 long years, so they want to establish, but they are not able to uh, prosper. So then God raised uh, Zachariah and God raised Agai, the prophet Agai, to prophesy in the name of Lord and bring back the uh, people of uh, Israel to build the king, uh, to build the temple of the Lord. So here, during that time, you know, here Joshua, he uh, saw uh, he the prophet uh, Zechariah, he saw the vision. In, in the vision, he saw the angel of the Lord. Joshua is standing, the high priest. You know, the this is not the Joshua, you know, Moses, Moses Joshua. This is a different Joshua um, a, along with Zerubbabel. He was the leader. He was the, um, uh, the high priest and he was the spiritual leader. Zerubbabel was the political leader. Uh, Joshua, he was the uh, spiritual leader. So God always he work with leadership. You know, you know, uh, God chose Moses. The same God uh, ch chose Joshua. Here God uh, chose Joshua and Zerubbabel, and God chose Paul. You know, God's work always he he used the leadership throughout the Bible. We can read, but here uh, the leader, the spiritual leader, the high priest. Now he is standing in the uh, in in the presence of the the angel of the Lord. So he saw the vision. You know, throughout the scripture, the angel of the Lord. Sorry, sorry, pre-incarnation of Christ Jesus. So we can read in Exodus uh, three two. Could you kindly read? Uh, And the angel of the Lord mm. appeared to him in a flame of fire mm. from the midst of a bush. Mm. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Amen. So here, you know, the angel of the Lord, he appeared to Moses in the burning bush. You know, we know the passages. So uh, when the uh, when Bible said, the angel of the Lord, he the angel of the Lord is in the burning bush. Uh, and then keep reading. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and yeah. see this great sight. Mm. Why the bush does not burn? Yeah. So he was wondering why the bush, uh, the, so the, the fire is going, the, why the bush is not consumed. Please, yeah. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst so of the So here, you know, Bible said, you know, it's a very important word. The angel of the Lord. By the first, you know, verse 2, we read the angel of the Lord. Then the Moses want to see the, the, the burning bush. I want to go and see the burning bush. Then if you read verse 4, 4 said the Lord and also it said it is God. It is God. Then who is the angel of the Lord? Jesus Christ is God. You know, God. So, God, He saw God. You know, always, you know, the triune God, Trinity. So, you know, I will give one more example. When you, uh, uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter um, uh, 18, chapter 18, please read the one. Genesis chapter 1, 18, 1. Then the Lord appeared yeah. to him by the terrible tree of Nebel. Hmm. As he was so Bible says, here uh, Abraham, so God appeared to Abraham. Lord appeared to him. Uh, Lord appeared to Abraham. So he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, three men were standing by him. So here, you know, amazing. So your uh, Bible says, God, Lord appeared to Abraham. And he saw, how many persons he saw? Three men. Three men. Three men. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 
So here, you know, the three men, they were with Abraham. They were with Abraham. But the Spirit of God, when he writes, God, the Lord appeared to Abraham. He saw three men. Three men. The triune God. The triune God. But if you read, keep reading. So, when, you know, after uh, God uh, had a meal with Abraham and he prophesied about Isaac and Abraham is walking with the three person. Then if you read, uh, uh, then God is talking about the Sodom and Gomorrah and the two men left and he is standing in the presence of the Lord. It is amazing. So, so, you know, it is, you know, throughout scripture, you can read triune God. You know, God the Father, God the Son, under the head of, you know, the Holy God, Godship. Godhead, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, as far as for we have, we have flesh, we have the spirit, we have the soul. We have the soul. So here, uh, you know, the angel of the Lord appeared. Uh, so the Joshua standing before the angel of the Lord, and you know if you read uh, the, the the if you read the and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him, oppose him. So uh, Joshua is standing before uh, uh, Christ, the angel of the Lord. Satan he is standing. At the right hand to oppose Joshua, high priest. You know, Joshua, he was the uh, high priest. He is representing the nation of Israel. People, those who went to the uh, uh, Israel to build the kingdom of God, to build the uh, temple of the Lord. So he is representing the Jewish people. He is standing and Satan is opposing uh, Josh, uh, Joshua Joshua so if you read uh, uh, Revelation 12 10 please for the accuser of our brethren to yeah. accuse them before our God day uh, and night has been cast down yeah so here you know in Revelation 12 10 so here the uh, you know the heavenly uh, heavenly uh, pictures. So here, Mike, uh, Michael and his angels fought with the uh, the evil, the evil. And Michael and the angel they came from the presence of God. They have the power of God, so they destroyed the the serpent from the heavenly place to the earth. So heaven rejoiced. Heaven rejoiced, and they and they say, the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night, day and night. You know, today, the Satan is standing in the presence of God. You know, always you should remember not, you know, face to face. He is sitting, God is sitting above everything. So under his feet, he is sitting, standing and accusing brethren. He is accusing God's children, accusing God's children. So he is accusing, but you know, the angel of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, He always intercedes for you and me. Amen. Because of he, he is interceding for us, so we are safe. When we are under the blood of Jesus Christ, so He always, uh, Jesus Christ always, He intercedes for us. Because we are washed by the blood of Christ Jesus. So here Joshua, He was the Jewish man, he was an Israelite, he is the, the chosen people. So Jesus Christ, so the angel of the Lord, he is interceding. We will see in the, in the following verses. So here says, Satan is accusing, accusing, always accusing. You know, when you see people accusing others, so we should remind that they have the spirit of Satan. Always, people always accuse God's children, especially the leadership, people, pastors probably, or uh, God, when God use God's children, uh, the people will accuse God's children. God's children. Always we should remember, God 
always God's work always work with the leadership leadership so here Satan is accusing Joshua Joshua so he is representing um, the uh, uh, the Jewish people so you can read in uh, Exodus 22 12 to 2 and 29 and you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother mm. for glory and for beauty mm. so God said you know you can make garment for, garment for Aaron, your brother. Aaron your brother for glory and beauty to glory and beauty, beauty. but beauty but if you see here you know the Joshua is standing in the presence of the in the angel of the Lord Satan is standing right to Joshua and opposed him and he saw in the vision he saw the uh, if you read verse 3 now Joshua was clothed, clothed with filthy garments and standing before the angel so when we read in Exodus 28 2 God uh, asked Aaron to wear a beautiful garment you know the high priest they used to wear a beautiful garment. Can you read again? Exodus uh, 28 to. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother. Holy garments to you. Uh, Aaron, for Aaron your, your brother. Uh, for glory and for beauty. To glory and Exodus. beauty. Glory and beauty. You know that is uh, for holy or <laughs> holy garment. But here Joshua. He wear the filthy garment. The filthy garment. So it's the contrast. Contrast. So maybe this may be the sins of the people, those who went back to uh, Jerusalem to build the altar. Probably, you know, they, they came with a great passion to build the uh, temple of the Lord. But opposition came. They left everything and they forgot the mission, their mission. And they forgot their call. You know, often we used to, when we, we face problem or persecution, often we forgot our call. We forgot our mission. We started to do our own. We even we won't pray with God. So here, they left the mission of God. And they started to do uh, their own step. But, you know, it may be in the in the sight of God, maybe uh, maybe sin. If you leave God, if you if you if if God's children, if they doesn't do anything, that itself it's a sin. That's why you know James uh, said, if you have if you can able to help your brethren, if you are not able to do that, it is a sin. It is a sin. You know Bible said. You know here. They left their mission. So today God called you and me to help. To help people. To help people. Not only Christians. People, those who need. You know, we know, they need no need to ask us. But as a children of God, when we see somebody, in, they are in need, we should go and help them. That is the mission. That is the mission. You know, the, the good Samaritan story, Jesus said, the traveler, the Samaritan helped. The Samaritan helped. So as a God children, when we forgot our call, when we left our mission in the sight of God, maybe that may be the sin. <coughs> and also maybe uh, they have some other sin also. Maybe, uh, you know, uh, problem with their brothers, problem with their uh, neighbors maybe but here the Joshua is the uh, wearing a filthy garment because he wear the filthy garment so Satan is uh, uh, standing and oppose him oppose him and Satan is arguing to God you should not help Joshua you should not help the Jewish people Jewish people and also, Satan is accusing Joshua and the Israelites are not able to stand in your presence. You are a holy God. You are a holy God. 
these unholy people, how they can come to your holy presence. So he is accusing, he is accusing. You know the same way, in when Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Satan, Satan make Eve to deceive, to disobey. He deceived. But after they disobeyed, you know, they are in the presence of God. They felt they are naked. You know, Satan always, when he tempt people to do sin, when they did sin, he leave. Because he know, when somebody did sin, God's judgment will come upon them. So that is the, you know, deception of Satan. So here, you know, Satan probably is the one make people to deceive all these evil practices. Now he is accusing, accusing. So, uh, so we should never, God's children, never allow that evil spirit, never accuse anybody, anybody. So here Jesus Christ, here the angel of the Lord, he rebuke. Bible said, uh, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord said to Satan. You know, you can see here the angel of the Lord and the verse 2 it said, the Lord said to Satan. So, you know, Jesus said, I, in John 10, 30, I and my father are one. So, you know, the vision he saw, the angel of the Lord. And he, the Bible said, Lord said to Satan. The same way in the, we read in Exodus 3. So, um, Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord and the Lord, they are one. They are one. Uh, Jesus Christ and the Father are one. So here, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. You know, they are amazing. Amazing. Though Satan accusing you and me day and night in the presence of God, we have a great God who intercede for us. He, Jesus, always he, he intercedes. Father, you chose them. You chose them. Not because of our good deeds. Not because of our good deeds. You know, because of His grace, we are chosen. God, God chosen us. So here, uh, the uh, Lord said, Lord, rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. God chosen you and me before the foundation of the earth. Amen. Though we born in India, though we born in a different uh, uh, religion, you know, God chosen you and me. That is amazing. The same way God chose, uh, chosen Israel. Israel, Abraham. Um, if you read 1 King uh, 11.36, you know, several passages in the old scripture. Jerusalem, the city, God have chosen. God have chosen. If somebody, somebody <coughs> accuse, accuse God's chosen people, God always intervene. Intervene. So because, you know, we should understand God's move always work upon leadership. When something happens, some opposition comes, somebody accuse God's the leadership, God intervened. So here, Christ, he intervened. God intervened. And he rebuked Satan. He rebuked Satan. And also he, he said, uh, God rebuke you. And, uh, and also he said, is not a brand plucked from the fire. It is amazing word. It is amazing word. You know, because of the disobedience, because the Israelites, the children of God, they worship all the idols. Because of the immoral behavior uh, of the Jewish people, God allowed them to go for captivity. That is God. God is the one allowed them. God is the one uh, brought judgment. God is the one brought judgment. But here, God said, uh, is not a brand plucked from the fire. But these people, these Joshua and Zerubbabel 
and the 50,000 people, I don't know, I don't know how many uh, women went along with them, uh, but this group of people, they came back to a great mission. God said, these are the people brand plucked from the fire. So, you know, when, when you see a, a wood, okay, you know, wood in the, some area, if you fire, if you pull out the wood from the fire and when you, uh, what do you say, put off the fire, how the wood look like. You know, it's dark and the end of the, you know, the same picture here, uh, the God, he, the, he's, uh, the Zachariah, he saw the vision. So the plucked from the fire. So these are the remnant people. Remnant people, God saved them. God saved them. Though today Lord of uh, missions uh, under the name of Christ, there are few people, those who are doing the mission, doing, those who are uh, doing the vision of God with their whole heart, whole mind, with their whole strength, if somebody accuse those people, God will intervene. God will intervene. So here, God, he said, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So when God see the remnant people, the remnant people uh, of the Jewish people, he see, you know, God's punishment was done for the Jewish people. Jewish people. But these people are <coughs> remnant people. Remnant people. So here then, uh, then we saw uh, the verse 3. And the verse 4, verse 4, can you read? Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, mm. Take away the filthy garments from him. Mm. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Amen. So, we saw, we are a remnant people, and God protected them. When Nebuchadnezzar wanted to destroy the Jewish people, God is the one protected these remnant group. Remnant group, and uh, Bible said God chose the uh, city of Jerusalem. So now, the through the remnant people, God want to build the build the altar, build the altar. So here God said, uh, you know, uh, take away the filthy garment immediately. You know, he saw he was a filthy garment. Then with his grace and mercy, God said, take away the filthy garment from him. And to him, he said, I have removed your uniquity from you. It is amazing, you know, picture. You know, Joshua, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything to clean up his garment. But God, his grace and mercy... He removed the garment and he gave a beautiful new garment. You know, here you can read, I will clothe you with rich robes and let them put a clean turban on his head. On his head. God removed all the clothes and he, he put a new clothes and also he put a turban on the head of uh, Joshua. So if you read in Exodus 28, 28, 2 and 29, please. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother, for mm. glory and for beauty. Mm. 29. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate of judgment over his heart when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord continually. Amen. So now God clean up. He, he, where he put a new garment. And, and now you know, God said, now this is, he can be able to stand in the presence of God. Stand in the presence of God. He, he can represent all the 12 tribes of uh, the Israel. He can be the representative of the God chosen people. 
And if you read Leviticus 21, 10 to 15, please. Was the high priest among his brethren, mm. on whose head the anointing oil was poured, and who is consecrated to wear the garments? So, you know, the anointing oil to be poured out, poured out, yeah. And who is consecrated to wear the garments huh. shall not uncover his head, nor tear his clothes, nor shall he go near any dead bodies, nor defile himself for his father or, or his mother. Yeah. So, he can now, you know, through the mercy of God, now he, he, he was a, he made a holy person. And the anointing oil came upon, you know, the presence of the God, uh, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And also, um, uh, you know, God's, this is purely his grace. If you read uh, John 1, uh, 16, please. And of his fullness we have all received and grace for grace. Yeah. You know, his fullness. His fullness. You know, the fullness through, you know, it is a purely, you know, he, he didn't do anything the, for cleaning. But his grace, the grace of God, he removed the garment and he put a new garment. Because of his grace and mercy. You know, for salvation, we no need to do anything. Salvation is free. Jesus Christ, He paid everything for you and me. But for you and me to simply acknowledge what we are. We should acknowledge, Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, I am dirty. I am wearing a dirty cloth. Lord, forgive me all my sins. When we humble ourselves, when we ask God to take away the filthy garment from us, when we cry out to God, through His mercy, through His fullness of Christ. So we will receive grace for grace. And Romans 3.24 uh, 3.24 yeah. And fall short of the glory of God, mm. being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So everyone in this world, we are sinners. Sin fall short, fall short of, of the glory, glory of God. God. But justified through by his grace. grace. So Jesus Christ, he paid everything for us. So the same God, the angel of the Lord, he commanded. Because he is going to pay the price for the filthiness of Joshua. God knows. God knows. He is the one going to pay the price. You know, the same picture, you know, the same picture, Isaiah... Isaiah 51, 17 and 22. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, mm. you who have drunk at the hand of the Lord, mm. the cup of his fury, you have drunk the dredge of the cup of trembling and drained it out. So, uh, 22. 22. Yeah. Thus says your Lord, the Lord and your God, who pleads the cause of his people, see, I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling, the dregs of the cup of my fury, you shall no longer drink it. Okay. Yeah, man. It is an amazing word. You know, Joshua, you know, the cup of wrath, because of their disobedience, the Israelites, God allowed, the, uh, uh, God brought judgment. God brought judgment. When God, the judgment was over, God take out the judgment from Israelites and the cup of wrath to be Transfer to Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. So he paid everything. So now, through his grace and mercy, through his grace and mercy, completely removed and he got a, uh, a cloth with a rich robes and let them be put a clean turban on his head. On his head. Amen. That's a, so the anointing, the turban is Probably, that may be represent the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the, the calling of God. So, then, um, uh, you can read Romans 5, 18 and 19. 
therefore as as through one man's offense mm. judgment came to all men mm. resulting in condemnation even so through one man's righteous act the free gift came to all men resulting in justification of life amen second corinthian 5:21 for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him amen so you know several verses you know we can read in scripture <clears throat> so because through his righteousness through the righteousness of Jesus Christ we are righteous we are righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ we are clean we are holy people <clears throat> we are holy people so we have the rich robes and also clean turban on his head we can receive the the anointing anointing through the rest, through the death of christ jesus through the death of christ jesus and uh, you can read in uh, revelation 3 th uh, 7 13 please One of the then, one, yeah. then one of the elders answered, say to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep reading. And I said to them, sir, you know. So he said to me, these are the ones who came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes in, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, the, the, you know, for them, he is going to pay for us already he paid already he paid so everything you know even the old testament and the new testament it's always pointing towards the the death and resurrection of jesus christ so everything the believers you know the old testament believers also they will be they are they will they they are saved through the blood of jesus christ they are you know they uh, the reference to the blood of jesus christ they offered the the sacrifices they sacrifices but when they sacrifices in the old testament it referred to the blood of jesus christ so without the blood of jesus christ without christ jesus nobody can enter into the heaven that's why jesus said um, no one comes to the father except through me through me even the old testament a uh, prophet they are longing to christ they are longing to christ so they know god is going to shed his, uh, his blood for us so they they are proclaiming the proclaiming so here you know because of grace and mercy um uh, he got a clean turban uh, uh, right uh, will be clothed with in rich robes and clean turban and now god said they put a clean turban on his head and they put a clothes on him so they put when god commanded so they did it so then and the angel of the lord stood by stood by now god god removed everything removed everything and he made joshua to stand in his presence worthy to stand in his presence you know first thing first thing when god when we come to the presence of god god washes through the blood of jesus christ and he put and give the uh, garment of salvation and he put the uh, righteous uh, robe and also god anoints us <coughs> through the power of the holy spirit and then god make us to stand in his presence that is the same picture you know we can see here then the angel of the lord said uh, now the angel of the lord admonished joshua he is interceding now he is interceding for joshua and um, god through his grace made joshua to worthy and he is interceding joshua if you and, and uh, you can read here the verse said thus says the lord of hosts if you will walk in my ways so now god clean god put a new garment everything is new and then it is a god commanded to joshua 
the high priest thus says the lord of lord of hosts if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command then you shall also judge my house and i likewise and likewise have charge of my court my court i will give you places to walk among these who stand here amen so now we are clean now he is holy god made him holy so god then we should have the commandment to meditate if you keep my commandment so how we can know the commandment by reading you can read in joshua 17 only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which moses my servant commanded you do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go amen so when we come to the when we when we are believe us when we born again then we should after that we should keep all the commandment the the law of the lord law of the lord you know through the power of the holy spirit so god is today is guiding us is guiding us and make us to walk worthy of the calling so if you read galatian 5:16 I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. So when we accepted Christ, when we are redeemed, we should walk by the Holy Spirit. So we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Flesh always want to pull you and me down. But you and me to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we should walk. When we have the spirit of God, you know amazing word in Ezekiel Ezekiel 36 uh, 36 27 I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall and you will keep my judgments and do them. It's an amazing word. God said I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes in my ways. You know when we receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit the spirit of God will make us to remind the word of god you know john 16 13 please however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth he will guide you in all truth all truth he will make you and me to remind about the commandment of god the spirit of god he make you and me to always <coughs> he remind us what the call what he call uh, for you and me to do the will of god and for he will for he, for he will not speak on his own authority mm -hmm. but whatever he hears he will speak and uh, he will tell you things to come amen so when we accepted christ when we accepted christ <clears throat> we want to walk in the way walk in the way of god and we should keep the commandment of god <clears throat> you know today lot of uh, some uh, uh, theologian they used to argue if you say one time you are saved you will be you can be go to heaven any time but the word you know it is <coughs> not saying that you know now god made joshua to clean make him to be a holy person make him to worthy to stand before god and he commanded joshua you should hear if you want to stand in my presence you know um, if you want to come you know i will give you the place to walk among these who stand here if you want to come here in my holy presence now i made you clean now i made you holy but you should read you read if you should walk in the way and you should keep my commandment the spirit of god make you and me to walk in the way of the lord that's why you know bible says you should not quench the holy spirit holy spirit that we should not grieve him when we disobeyed when we disobeyed when the holy spirit when he reminds you and me immediately we should obey when we you know we can have different kind of opinion within the family or, or the fellowship or the church but the spirit of god will make you to remind <coughs> oh you did a wrong thing you you anger with your brother go and reconcile with him or her 
So that is the spirit of the Holy Spirit. He will make you to remind you. So immediately, you and me to obey. Obey. We should reconcile. We should love. We should love. If we disobeyed, if we disobeyed, we are grieving the Holy Spirit. We are grieving. So if we are grieving and grieving, we, we are not disobeying. We, we are, so we are not obeying the word of God. You know, after some point, the Spirit of God wants you to remind you. He was so gentle. He was so gentle. He will wait you and me to come back. If somebody keeps sinning, keeps sinning. You know, for example, uh, Judas Gariel, you know, God spoke to him. <coughs> Jesus, he, he told Judas, don't betray Christ. Christ. He made him to obey his commandment. But he rejected. He disobeyed. But what happened? He, he, he died. He, he suicided himself. So he cannot be able to go and stand in the presence of God. He lost the blessing. Greatest blessing. So, you know, we should always walk in the Holy Spirit. That's why, you know, we should walk in the Spirit of God. He will guide us. Guide us. <clears throat> and also, you know, when we walk, when we led by the Holy Spirit, you and me judge uh, judge people. If you read 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 3, please. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? So here we are going to, when we walk by the Holy Spirit, when we led by the Holy Spirit, so then Bible said you, first we, sh we will judge the the. Uh, the world, yeah. Keep and if the world will be judged by you, hmm. are you not? Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Hmm. Keep reading. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? Yeah, we should judge angels. You know, God give authority. But you and me, to by His grace, we should be saved, and we should walk in the way of the Lord, and then we can <coughs> walk in the presence of God, presence of the God. Then, verse uh, 8 to uh, the, the few verses, 8, 9 and 10, then the focus is shifted, shifted. And then God said, now you are saved, <coughs> now you know you are saved, you should led by the Holy Spirit, now you hear, now he, you hear, hear O Joshua, <coughs> the high priest, you and your companions who sits before you, very carefully you should hear. And God said, For they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. The branch. You know, branch always, he referred to the, the title for the Messiah. You can read in Isaiah 4.2. 4.2. 11 1 probably one word we can read Isaiah 4 2 in that day the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious mm. and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for yeah. those of Israel who have escaped yeah Isaiah 11 1 then the, there shall come forth a, a rod from the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Amen. So here, you know, branch always in the, in the, you know, branch, you can see here, you know, caps letter. You know, branch referred to Lord Jesus Christ. So God said, you know, I, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch, the branch. So here, Joshua is uh, the angel of the Lord is Talking to Joshua about his coming, his coming. It is amazing. You know, if you read uh, Peter 1, 1 Peter 1, 11. Sorry. 
searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Amen. So Jesus Christ in the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit writing about the about the branch is going to come from the root of Jesse. So God said, I am bringing forth my servant the branch. So the now here, you know, um, the, the Messiah, the title, you know, he was the bringing the branch, is the branch as a servant, as, as a human form. And he want to come forth from the uh, lineage of David, the Jesse, we read. And also, second uh, verse 9. For behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Mm. Upon the stone are seven eyes. So here he said, you know, here branch. And also he said, uh, <laughs> for behold the stone. That the I stone. Have, I have laid before Joshua. Before the Lashua. The, before Joshua. So the stone, you know, you, when you read in First Peter 2, 4, please. First Peter 2, 4. Yeah. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. So here, uh, Peter said, he is the cornerstone. So the cornerstone. <coughs> so the cornerstone, so God said, uh, behold the stone I laid before Joshua. I put a stone. I am going to bring in the uh, <coughs> my servant in the lineage of David. I am going to put him, put him and you should build on him. You know the cornerstone. So we, when the cornerstone, when they put, we should put the, uh, we should build on, build on. So here Jesus said, uh, so, so here God said, you should, uh, you should build on. But what happened? These Jewish people, they rejected. They rejected. So God commanded, you should hear and obey. Obey to, you know, uh, hear O Joshua. And this is the message for not only Joshua, high priest, and all the people of the Jewish people. But exactly, you know, the Jewish people, they rejected. The high priest in those days, the Hananias, you know, they, they are the one make Jesus to go for crucifixion. They want to deny him. They, they shouted, <coughs> crucify him. And also, and, the, and also all the Jewish people. So, they disobeyed. They disobeyed. That's why because of their disobedience, God allowed them captivity again. You know, they, you know, 70 AD, the Romans, they destroyed the Jewish people. Still now, they are struggling. Because they are rejected the plan of God. They rejected the cornerstone. They want to build on. They want to build on. So you and me to build our faith on Christ. He is the, our, our solid <coughs> rock. He is our corner foundation. So then, that is the second picture. <coughs> the first picture, God said, bringing, my, uh, bringing forth my servant as the branch. That is the first picture. Cornerstone, my, we should... Uh, we should build on and also he said behold I will engrave its inscription says the Lord of host so God said you know if you read 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians 3 6 and 7 who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills, but the spirit is life. But if the ministry of, uh, of them <coughs> written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory are passing away. Amen. So God said, I am going to, I will engrave its inscription about the crucifixion of <coughs> Christ Jesus. You know, God, uh, uh, God engraved. Uh, the inscription to Moses to Moses in the Mount Sinai so here you know I am going to 
we call idol engraved its inscription of the branch of the branch and the cornerstone i am going to make him to go for crucifixion you know if you read first peter 1:11 please again searching what or what manner of time hmm. the spirit of christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of christ and the glories that would follow amen the suffering of lord jesus christ so here the almighty god is speaking to joshua you know here this is going to happen i am going to raise a branch so you should build your faith upon the the uh, the, the cornerstone and he is going to suffer he is going to suffer you know the crucifixion so today god writes your name and my name the blood of jesus christ on the book of life so if you and me your name and my name to be there in the book of life we should wash by the blood of jesus christ we should uh, walk by the holy spirit and also we should build our faith on christ on christ and we should fall always to worship god worship god because in this engraved inscription and also uh, he said and i will remove the iniquity of the land in one day in one day so this is not yet happen so today when we believe us when we believe us even the jewish people when they understand <coughs> jesus christ is their messiah when they cry out to god so the people are god take away the filthiness god give a new garment on god give the spirit of the holy spirit and make them to walk on the way of the lord and build their faith on christ but as not a individual it is a individual not as a nation not as a nation but one day one day the whole nation of israel they are going to call out the name of the lord call out the name of, name of the lord you know today for israel they have probably around 10% christians so though the the jewish people they they are uh, they are persecuting the christians within their community but you know one day one day they are going to call upon the name of the lord today israel is uh, you know go is sent uh, people to different uh, nations to help them people uh, you know the prime minister going to uh, visiting different nation to get help and uh, they are giving all the things and, but nobody is uh, came forward to help them you know today america came forward i don't know how long but you know they are looking for people but god is saying you should look upon me look upon me so what you know when the end of the seven year persecution end of the you know they are going to build the temple and uh, and after three and a half years god sent the two prophets to prophesy and uh, then the <coughs> anti christ will come and they go through much persecution and problem and at the end of the three and a half years they will understand the plan of god and they will cry out to god if you read um uh, if you read uh, i think uh, zakaria 12:10 please and i will pour on the house of david and on the inhabitants of jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication and they will look on me whom they pierced yes they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn amen so when they grieve when the, all the nation as a nation whole nation will look upon god when they he they look upon those who pierced him they will cry out to god they mourn and mourn and they will they will call joshua uh, 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 messiah they will call him jesus you are our messiah so that day that minute god will remove everything all the iniquity it's a one day one day that day israel will be saved will be saved you can read in Uh, Romans 11 26 uh, uh, Zechariah 13 1 
Zechariah 31. In that day a fountain shall be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. Amen. So one day. Yeah. Please read uh, Roman 11, 26 and 27. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Amen. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Amen. It's a one day. So you and me, the whole world is longing. When they cry out to God, so God will make Israel to be a holy nation. In that day, then they will understand he is our branch. Jesus Christ is our branch. <coughs> he is our Messiah. And they will understand. He is their cornerstone. And they will build. And they will build. And they will understand. He is the one pierced for them. He is the one shed blood for them. And he will remove the uh, iniquities in one day. That day. You know, then the promise will uh, come true in their life. In that day, verse 10, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his wine and under his fig tree. You know, it's a great peace. Great peace. Today, you know, uh, you know, the Jerusalem means it is a peace. It is a city of peace. At name. The meaning is <laughs> no peace. Every day in our newspaper, we can read about uh, uh, Jerusalem and Israel, bomb blast and all the things happening. No peace in Jerusalem. <clears throat> but when they call as a nation to call upon the name of the Lord. So that day, God will give a great peace upon Jerusalem. No fight. <clears throat> no, you know, you can read in Micah 4, 4. But everyone shall sit under his wine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Amen. You can Christ, when the nation, when they cry out to God, so great peace, great peace, and Jesus Christ will rule from them. Rule from them. So it is a prophetic message for the Messiah and his reign. So today, when we accept Christ, so God will give that peace, that peace. You know, these, these the Jewish people are waiting. But when we accept Christ today, we have a great peace in our heart. We will be under the shadow of the Almighty. So we can be filled with the presence of God. So today is our day. We can cry out to God. We will invite him. Invite him. Lord, we are. You pierced for us. You pierced for us. You died for us. Help us to build our faith on you. When we call, when we build our faith on Christ. So, we will be under his wings. And we will have the wine. Uh, under his wine and under his fig tree. It's a, you know, it, it, it represents the peace. The peace and joy and happiness. Let's close our eyes and